Okay, this chapter is about the material master. Material master. We have already discussed the importance master data and we have already discussed the customer master. So in material master, we are going to focus first on two different things. Number one is the significance of material master. And number two, we're going to focus on the important fields and their business significance. And then of course, as usual, I'm going to conclude it and then do a quiz. So if you want to understand the significance of the material master, we should first understand the life cycle of a material master or the life cycle of a material. And then we are going to understand the interaction of the different departments in any company. So we'll be focusing on this first, the life cycle. The life cycle of a material goes something like this. A material is created and the material is used in transactions. A material is changed and of course a material can be discontinued or archived. So a material is created and it's used in transactions and through the course of its life cycle it can be changed and finally the material can be discontinued or archived so let's take an example say apple apple makes new version of iphone so a material is created in the system why is this material created because it has to be referred and used again and again during orders, during order confirmations, purchase orders, sales orders. We'll see some examples. So in this guy, Apple is the manufacturer. Or let's take another example. Let's take Best Buy. Best Buy also sells iPhones. So they sell an iPhone, the same version of the iPhone. So Best Buy also needs to create iPhone as a material in its SAP system. In this case, Best Buy is acting as a distributor. Now you might be wondering, do materials need to be created only in the case of manufacturing or distribution or when there is a physical tangible goods not necessarily let's take another example say a b c spa they have come up with a new therapy and they have to create it as a material in the system you see in this case it's not really a physical material it's just a service so it need not always be a physical material it need not always be a manufacturer or distributor of physical materials. It could be services. In all these cases, materials need to be created. Now let's understand the changes that can happen to a material. For example, Apple manufactures iPhone in let's say San Francisco. It does not, it manufactures it in China, but let's assume it manufactures in San Francisco. Now. All of a sudden, let's say they have changed their plant and they have started manufacturing in Los Angeles. 
what does this mean that this material will be changed maybe from a certain point in time six months from now and the field that's getting changed for that material is what is called as a delivering plant don't worry we'll we'll see this field in the system another case let's say this distributor best buy sells iphones and uh, iPhones are categorized in their product structure or sales structure as uh, phones. So all the revenue of for iPhone sales come under the bucket of phone sales. But since iPhones became very popular, Apple's products, they want to categorize them under a different bucket. So all phones come under the category of phones, but an iPhone comes under the category of an iPhone or app. What does this mean now? So this is a change in the classification of the material. So probably something like a material group. Again, we're going to see all these fields. The point I'm trying to make is changes happen to materials all the time. Just like the way a customer's address can be changed, the properties of a material can be changed at any time. And then I said, you can use these materials in transactions. What kind of transactions? Let's say there's an order for an iPhone. So Apple creates an order. So order, line number 10, iPhone, some quantity. And then delivers that order using a delivery, another transaction. Again, the same material is used. Now, Apple invoices this order. Same material is used. So, these are examples of sales transactions. Orders, deliveries, invoices, goods issues, and so on. Now, let's take the case of Best Buy. So, Best Buy places an order with Apple. In this case, it's purchasing, not sales. Right? So, there's Apple... And there's Best Buy. So the PO is placed uh, from Best Buy to Apple for the same product, 10 iPhone. Apple creates a sales order, like in our case. And the sales order is delivered and billed. So this purchase order that Best Buy has created will be completed with what's called as a goods receipt. So they take the goods that come in from Apple, put them in their warehouse, and of course, it's billed, so they do an invoice receipt. After which, of course, they'll be paid. So these are examples of purchasing transactions. Now what about the case of a spa? It's even simpler. There is a sales order. And of course, there's no delivery because there's no need for a delivery. It's not physical goods. The order is invoiced after the service has been done. Now, here is our customer. The customer will receive the invoice via the accounting department. And the customer will pay for that invoice to the accounting department and all along there is this material iPhone iPhone and the customer is paying for an iPhone because he needs to know for which material he is paying so this is an example of service or financial transactions so a material is used not just in sales but in purchasing financial and so many other departments We'll talk about the different departments in a bit, but let's just finish our life cycle. You know where we started? We started with the creation of a material, changing of a material, using the material in transactions, and finally, it can either be discontinued or archived. So what's the meaning of discontinued? And what's the difference between discontinuing a product and archiving the product. Say Apple has released a new version of the iPhone. Say it's iPhone 5 now, 
and then they're going to come up with six. Now, the older version of the iPhone is no longer required. So, this material is going to be discontinued. I'm going to show you an example of how to discontinue a product or a material in SAP. And you can do it at country level or sales org level. Meaning, iPhone 5 might be discontinued in the US and superseded by iPhone 6. So iPhone 5 is no longer available in the US. But in other countries, say India, iPhone 5 may still be available. So what does that tell you? There needs to be a facility in SAP where you can discontinue products by sales org or by a certain region. That is discontinuing a product. What's archiving? Say 10 years from now, I don't know, it could be iPhone version 25 or a different thing altogether. At that point, the iPhone 5 material is still in the system. Although it's discontinued, if you go to MM03, which is the transaction to view the customer master, it's still there. And all the transactions from 10 years which used that material are still there. Are they required? Well, that's a legal decision. For example, the US government says that you have to maintain transactions for seven years in the pharma or medical domain. For iPhone, probably you only need to maintain it for two years. So if they are no longer required, they can be archived. So all the transactions, including the master data, the material, will be sent out of the ERP into a different box altogether. If you want to use them, there are different ways to use them. But once archived, you won't see them in MMO3, the standard transaction. That's archival. So that's the life cycle of a product. Now, we briefly touched on the different departments that use the product in the case of Apple and Best Buy. But let me explain it a little bit better. Let's take Apple, the same example. And Apple sells to Best Buy. In this case, it's a sale. Best Buy, in order to receive that sale, has to send a purchase order. So this is purchasing. So Apple sells while Best Buy purchases. So this is a sales order and this is a purchase order. So how many departments are involved here? Sales department, of course, and purchasing department, two different departments. Now Apple, let's say, manufactures this in some exotic location somewhere in China and stores them in a warehouse in San Francisco and when it is coming from the plant to the warehouse Apple has to do quality and inspection so there is a quality department that does that so first we had the sales department that uses a material. Next we had a purchasing department that uses the same material. Next we had a quality department that uses the same material. So it's already three departments that use the material. Now Apple, although might not manufacture it on its own, it outsources it to some vendors. In order to do that, there is another department in any manufacturing company called the MRP department, Material Requirement Planning. They plan how many iPads need to be manufactured or how many iPhones need to be manufactured. And of course, they have a piece of the pie of the material master as well. So quality is the third department and MRP is the fourth department. And of course, there's finance because if Apple sells to Best Buy, Best Buy has to send money for the amount of goods that it has received and the financial department of Apple will receive money against that invoice for the product iPhone. 
The point being, if you take the material master as a big elephant, different departments perceive it differently. And different departments store different data in the material master that's relevant for their department. For example, the sales department will store the sales relevant details of the of the material in that material master. So let's say if this circle represents an iPhone, the sales view or the sales data, the material, is only relevant for sales. Similarly, the finance data is only relevant for finance. And you can go on and on and on for all the different departments. Say, purchasing, quality, MRP, and so on. There are almost around 16 to 20 different views. And we're going to see the most important views in a bit.